Eva. Let us begin. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is Monday again. It's Monday morning, August 19. So we are beginning a new work week, a new school week. For some of you, some of us here, we've begun our homeschooling days again, or homeschooling cycle. The others who are attending uh, the junior college are not quite there yet, but that begins next week, right? Next week, Sophia, Jacob, and Jana will start doing their um, junior college next week. Okay, so today we have a very interesting gospel reading. It's quite controversial, um, but it's... Uh, it's something that we need to understand. A virtue that is not very common, uh, but our Lord is um, inviting us in today's gospel to put this virtue into good use. Okay, so we are reading from St. Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 to 22. A young man approached Jesus and said, Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? What good must I do to gain eternal life? He answered him, Why do you ask me about the good? A very philosophical question. Jesus asks this young man, Why do you ask me about the good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. So you see, there is only one who is good. Who is Jesus referring to here? Who is that one who is good? God. God. And God is the source of all good. Right? So if you want to do good, really what our Lord is saying here is, well, you follow what God tells you. Because God is the only one who is good. God is the source of all good. Okay? So, then he asks him, which ones, which commandments do I have to do? And then Jesus just rattles off, well, the Ten Commandments, right? Which he has already given to them through Moses. Moses. Very good. Okay, through Moses. Very good, Mia. So Jesus replied, well, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, uh, honor your father and your mother, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Then the young man says, okay, I've done all of those things. I'm doing all of those things, right? All of these I have observed. What, what do I still lack? I'm already doing all of these things. What, what else is there that I still lack? And Jesus said to him, mm. Jesus saw in him somebody who loves challenges maybe, right? He likes to challenge himself. He likes to do more because he wants to prove that um, he can be a disciple. See? Maybe for all you know, he was seeing Jesus, observing Jesus, and observing the apostles, and seeing that, wow, this, these, these guys are a bunch of, a bunch of leaders that uh, I can emulate. These guys are a bunch of uh, holy people that I could and maybe should follow, right? So he felt like he was being called to something uh, that's bigger and greater than just himself. Okay? So he was, he was feeling the, the, uh, the prompts of, of a vocational calling to something greater and bigger than just himself. Because he said, I'm already living all of those things and now all of those commandments are just about me and just about my relationship with God. But what are you guys doing? How come you guys seem to be so good, so holy, and so, so uh, you know, driven to do more? What is it that you guys are doing I am not doing? If we are all both just living the commandments and you told me I just have to live the commandments. But no, there's something else there that you guys seem to be a little bit, you know, uh, uh, more advanced or a little bit more motivated to do something else, to do greater things. What is it that you're doing, which I am not doing? And our Lord looks at him, perhaps with affection, and tells him, mm, 
You want to do more? You want to be perfect the way that we are trying to be perfect? Okay, here's the formula. Sell what you have and give to the poor. Sell what you have and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven because that is what I and my guys around me are working for. Heaven. These band of apostles you see around me, that's what we are doing. We are working towards heaven. And so for, for these guys, it's not quite enough just to follow the commandments. They're working towards heaven. So I had told them, I had told them, leave everything behind and come follow me. And that's what they did. Now you little punk, you. <laughs> you want to follow me, really? Well, you got to give up your possessions. Sell what you have and come follow me. When the young man heard this statement, he went away sad. For he had many possessions. The young man had many possessions. Okay. First question is, so what if he has many possessions? Right? Wasn't it easy? Jesus is just saying, well, just sell what you have and just come follow me. Just like all these other apostles, they left their boats, they left their nets, they left their families uh, when I invited them. And they readily dropped everything and followed me. They have nothing. When they followed me, they have no possessions. In fact, I told them, don't carry a sack, don't carry an extra tunic, don't carry money. When I send you off to do your mission, eh? don't carry any of these things. They had nothing on them. Nothing on them. So you want to be following me, you young man? You want to follow me? Then the requirement is you should carry nothing. You should own nothing and follow me. But the young man became sad. Why was he sad? Why, why, why did, did that particular requirement of getting rid of all his possessions dampen his spirit? And, and he lost his motivation to follow Jesus. You know why? It is not because possessions are bad. It is not because material things are bad. It is not because we cannot own material things. What is bad about possessions is that we get attached to them. So attachment is what's wrong about owning stuff. It is not the fact of owning them that makes possessions bad. It is our attachment to them. And attachment, the reason why attachment is bad is because, as our Lord is trying to teach this young man in this gospel, is because when we get so attached to material goods, okay, we tend to forget about God. We tend to forget that material things on earth are only here for our temporary use. It is in fact here so that we can use them to go to heaven. So that we can use them to sanctify ourselves. To facilitate our going to heaven. But since we cannot take all of these possessions with us to heaven when we die, then really they are all unnecessary for our sanctification. They're, they're really not necessary. That is why those who are called to a, a, a life of complete poverty and detachment from material goods, such as, you know, religious, okay, or the hermits of old, Eh? They can live with nothing. They can live with nothing. I don't know if you remember when we made a trip to the missions in San Francisco or other missions where we we see the cells of the monks, right? Like the cell of Saint Junipero Serra in in uh, Carmel, 
What do you find there in that cell? Do you recall? What did you find in the cell? What possessions did Saint Junipero Serra have? Yeah, a wooden bed, a table, a desk for him to be able to study and work. That's it, right? And maybe a few pairs of uh, uh, habits, right? Or Cossacks. That's it. Okay? And they have their meals that they're given. And, you know, that's it. They live in the most frugal manner because they only use material goods as an aid, as a help for them to go to heaven, to sanctify themselves. Okay? So, what our Lord is teaching here is that material possessions are not bad. Rich, richness is not bad. Wealth is not bad. Okay? Because we need wealth. We need resources in order for us not only to feed ourselves and nourish ourselves and keep ourselves healthy but we also need a roof on our heads we also need some recreation sometimes we need shoes on our feet we need clothes on our back right because we are not angels right? we are not spiritual beings we have bodies that we need to care for and we need to use in order to you know do the work of god here on earth and in order to help sanctify ourselves we need material resources. So possessions themselves and working towards uh, increasing our wealth and our resources are not bad at all. Right? But they become an obstacle to our sanctity if we get to be attached to them. Okay? If we cannot uh, do away with them when we have to or 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 we cling on to these possessions like they were our only hope for having a better life or or, or comfort or whatever it is that we can uh, uh, concoct in our minds as being ultimately necessary why we need them remember what our lord also said in another gospel says it's very difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. <laughs> Can you imagine that, Mia? You know how difficult it is, right? To string a uh, thread through the eye of a needle. But our Lord says it's easier for a camel to pass through that little hole than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. What does our Lord mean? Is it, does he mean it's impossible or oh, rich people don't go to heaven? No, <clears throat> he didn't mean that. What he meant was because rich people maybe have the tendency to be attached to their richness, to their riches, attached to their wealth, attached to their possessions. It's so difficult for them to get rid of them. Like this young man, he went away sad because he says, oh, come on. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of everything I own just to follow you? No, that's, that's a little too much. Okay, so, well, that's, so he went away sad. But what we have to understand is that our Lord is, well, it depends if, if, if any one of you are being called to a life of complete poverty, like some monks or some uh, nuns are, then yeah, if that is the spirit that God is leading you to, that's the way of life God is leading you to, then of course, you give up everything, right? But for the majority of us, for the majority of us, God may not be calling us to really abandon or or uh, do away with uh, all our possessions, but rather he wants us to use our resources for our perfection, for our sanctity. But he reminds us, don't put, don't pin your hopes on using all of those resources for heaven because it's not necessary for heaven. You need to be detached from these things. Okay? So the virtue our Lord is reminding us to live here is detachment. Detachment or the spirit of poverty. They are synonymous as far as this virtue of using our resources properly is concerned. Okay? Detach, detach. Don't, don't consider our material resources as though they were indispensable. No, they're not indispensable. Everything is dispensable, including ourselves. Right? Including ourselves. So, uh, let us not be attached to the things we have. We should be ready to always uh, part with them if we have to. Okay, We have to be ready to 
share them if we have to. That's why it's not a good idea for you not to be sharing your toys. Okay? Listen, listen, listen. Okay? Sh toys and other good things are meant to be shared. Okay? Okay? We have to be uh, ready to share these things. And not just to think, oh, this is only mine, mine, mine. And all mine. Okay, so how do we live detachment? How can we practice it? Okay, we got to wrap up in a few minutes here. We're going to Mass. Okay, how do we live detachment? Let's give a few, uh, a few um, uh, 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 strategies, a few tips. Number one, not to consider anything indispensable, right? Okay, not to consider anything indispensable. Number two, uh, don't crave for things that you don't have. Okay? Don't, don't, don't start uh, getting envious about what other people have. Oh, that guy has a fantastic pair of sunglasses. I think I like that. Oh, I like your shoes. Oh, is that a Nike or a Vans or a whatever brand it is? Oh, I like that. Mommy, I like those shoes. Or somebody's got nice clothes. And, you know, let's not crave for things that we don't have. Okay? Let us only... Okay, another tip is that's only uh, uh, when we have to buy stuff, let's, let's think twice, thrice, a hundred times over. Do I really need that? Okay. Is it absolutely necessary? Do I really, really need that which I think I want or I need? Okay. If it is not absolutely necessary, if it's just a whim, if it's just a... A, a, uh, a passing fancy, in all likelihood, you don't need it. So, don't buy it. Don't ask for it. It would have been a waste of money, a waste of resources for you to be spending money on things that you don't need. Okay? So, let us not be buying things just for the heck of it, even if it's just $1 or 99 cents. It is a waste of money. And it is not poverty. It is not detachment. Okay? Uh, sometimes we think, oh, I earned that money. I have the right to spend it. No, sir. <laughs> no, ma'am. Yeah, you earned that money. But God allowed you to earn that money. And God allowed you to make good money. Not to spend all for yourself. Okay? There are many other people who lack so many things in life that we could perhaps share our resources. Okay? Who's the author of Harry Potter? J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling. I just saw a, a news the other day. She fell off the billionaire list. You know, she's a billionaire because of Harry Potter. But very recently, she fell off, meaning she's no longer a billionaire. And you know why? She spent her money? No. She gave it away to charity. Could you imagine that? And this girl is not, this woman is not even Catholic. See? And I hear that some people are doing that now. From Warren Buffett to uh, Bill Gates. They're giving away their money to charity because they know they don't need it for themselves. See? So these are very good examples of very prominent people who are now trying to you know give more give more give more to others because they realize that not just because they earn the money they have the right to spend it on themselves alone so these are good people okay these are the kinds of people who understand the value of wealth and who understand that they make all this money not only for themselves but they have to share it see there's a there's a level of detachment there that we can emulate See? But maybe you say, oh, it's easy for those billionaires to get rid of billions because they have many more to spare. But me, I, I only have my sunglasses. <laughs> oh, me, I only have a little bit of my of dollars in my pocket. Oh, I'm not willing to part with these things. I'm so attached to them. I cannot give them away. Very bad. See, that is where, that is where uh, attachment sets in. And when we are so attached to these things, guess what happens? we tend to be more detached to God. See? That's the bad part about attachment to material things. We distance. It, it gives us the... the, the uh, it makes us distance ourselves from God, who is really our only wealth and our, the only most important 
resource that we should have in our lives. And if we become so dependent and attached to material things, we are in big trouble. We will have a harder time, a harder time dismissing temptations. We will have a harder time not sinning, not committing sin, big or small. We will have a harder time being nice and charitable to people. We will have a harder time disciplining, our, disciplining ourselves and you know, working towards loftier goals. Because we are so attached to material goods. Okay, another tip here. We have to be ready to give up ownership of anything when it is required. Okay? So not only to think, oh, this is mine, mine, mine. No, nope. we got to share things. Next tip. Let's not consider, let's not buy anything superfluous or unnecessary. Okay? Let us not buy anything superfluous or unnecessary. So we got to think twice, thrice, a hundred times over. Do I really need that? Okay? I'm just giving you a very clear, let's, let's get, give a very clear example here. You know that I have a few pairs of glasses, right? I got, <laughs> okay, I mean reading glasses. How do you like this? Anyway, <laughs> I bought this new thing on Amazon. Okay? But I also have other pairs there, right? So I just want to give you an example. This is a very clear example here. Okay? Why did I buy this $20 pair of uh, glasses right here? Okay? Is it just because it's going to make me more uh, handsome on camera? Well, maybe it would, but <laughs> that's not the point, right? Because if you notice, I have been having a hard time uh, reading from a piece of paper in front of me and then looking up to other things. It becomes a little bit difficult. Why? Because I got a very cheap uh, pair from Costco, right? Which uh, doesn't do a good job uh, at what it should be doing. So I felt it, it's necessary for me to buy something else that would help me function more efficiently. Okay? So this is for the sake of functioning more efficiently. So I'm making use of a resource. I bought something new just so that I could function more efficiently and do what I need to do more efficiently and more effectively. It is not for vanity. Right? It is not for vanity. Even if... Tita Nessie says here, oh, new, nice glasses. Thank you. Okay? But that's not the point. Okay? That's not the point. So, there is a very clear demonstration. Now, okay. What's the last tip we could give to everybody? Take good care of what you already own. Because if you don't take good care of what you own, you tend to destroy them, then you need to replace them. And that means you need to spend money again. Okay? Money that you would have spent unnecessarily if only you took very good care of what you already have. So sometimes we talk about shirts or clothes of mine that I've had since I was in college. Could you imagine that? <laughs> who, who among you out there uh, uh, who's, who's, uh, would still have pants and, and, and shirts that, uh, that uh, you had in college? And I'm not necessarily... Uh, a spring chicken here anymore but but yes I do have clothes that you know I've had since I was in college could you imagine that well pardon me for using myself as an example here but that is poverty right there that is detachment right there it means I've taken care of these stuff for a very very long time that I could use them up to now and that's exactly the same thing we should be doing okay with the things that we own Take good care of them. Not only your personal stuff, but things of the house. See? Things of the house. We have to take very good care of them so that they last. And we don't need to spend money unnecessarily on buying and buying new stuff. Okay? That's part of poverty. That's part of detachment. Okay. I guess that is it for us, folks. You see, now I can look at my glasses. I can look at that. and I can look at my watch, rather. And look, I can read what you're telling me on uh, Facebook. Hey, hey, uh, is that Jess? Okay, that's it. See, my glasses are working. Okay, <laughs> okay, folks. Uh, we're off to Mass this morning. Let's keep in mind the virtue of poverty and detachment the whole day today as we gun for heaven, as we try to not only keep the commandments that Jesus asks us to keep today, but also ask ourselves, do we want to be perfect like this young man 
uh, Jesus asked him, you want to be perfect? Go sell what you have. Give to the poor. Okay. Bye-bye for now. Bye, Eva. Hope to see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.